Welcome and thank you for coming to today's webinar, Harmonizing Branding and Search to Achieve Optimal Results. I'm going to turn it over to Pam Fitzgerald, who is going to start by talking about a very familiar brand to a lot of people. So brands promise a particular kind of experience, and Disney is the best example of that. Universally recognizable brands such as this brand, which, which has a large and loyal fan base, can be actually damaged this brand has to work hard to protect itself. Janet's going to talk a little bit about that now. You know, a brand reputation, as we all know, requires a lot of time and effort and money to build, but it can be damaged very quickly. And so there are really two facets to protecting your brand. There's the online and there's the offline. Right now, what, I, what I'd like to do right now is just show you a couple of ways that you can start to protect your brand online, take some steps to do that. Now, what tell you how can you protect yourself like Livestrong has done and here's Search Mojo's page and how we can help protect ourselves. And what you'll notice here is in these organic results, that's the non-advertising result, you'll see we have our website right first for our name, but then we have a lot of social media sites all ranking there in the top 10. And so one of the great things about social media profiles is that you can have them rank highly for your name and for your brand, and they help push out some of the other negative stuff. So I'm going to hand it back to Pam now, who's going to tell you a little bit more about the three facets of branding. We talked a little bit about the brand promise and the brand experience. I want to focus a little bit on the brand memory, because that's really where we're headed. So the brand promise is about committing to a particular experience. And it's also about the strategy and planning, especially in terms of customer service and the customer experience that ensures that an experience is delivered. But this all means you really have to understand who your customers are. I'd like to give an example of a company that really knows its customers very well. 